I'm Jordan from Always Improving and in this video I'm going to teach you how to learn anything extremely fast using 8 easy steps. Here's some evidence to prove these 8 steps really work. I use them to learn how to draw. Here's a face I drew before doing this and here's a face I drew 48 hours later after applying these steps. This isn't a perfect drawing, I know the proportions are off, but the point is that you can see a huge improvement in very little time, so it works. On to the steps. Step 1. Get inspired. This is the foundation of anything you want to learn. You have to actually want to learn how to do it. Three channels which inspired me to learn how to draw were Mike Boyd, Peter Draws and Draw with Jazza. I didn't intend to start learning to draw, I just watched their videos for the enjoyment of it and then the idea popped into my head that maybe I should have a go at drawing and so I did. This is called intrinsic motivation. It comes from within and it's the purest form of motivation because you're doing it for fun and not expecting a reward. To find something that inspires you in this way, you need to expose yourself to a lot of things and be open to trying them out. YouTube is a great place to start. Search for things you think you might like to do and start watching videos. Try watching videos about things you've never considered doing and if the video inspires you, then have a go. If they don't, keep looking. I'd highly recommend Mike Boyd's YouTube channel. He learns different things all the time and documents how long it takes him. It's really interesting to see how he overcomes the challenges of learning each new skill and the things he learns are so varied, I'm sure one of his videos will inspire you. So step one, get inspired. Step two, start. Yes, it's as simple as it sounds. I decided I wanted to learn how to draw at midnight one evening and the next day I went to Tesco to buy paper and some sketching pencils. I had no clue what I was looking for, I'd never bought art supplies before. I got these cheap sketching pencils and a sketch pad, which is for children I think, I could draw with them, and that was all I needed. The first thing I tried to draw was a nose, and this is how it came out. This is not about trying to be good at all. This is simply getting your foot in the door and starting. You can improve afterwards. When you start, it helps your brain to understand the task and everything involved. It's no longer just in your imagination. It's real, and that means you understand things you wouldn't have even thought of when you were just thinking of the task in your head. This means it's much easier to know what you should work on to improve. For example, I now know I'd be better with charcoal pencils and something called a Tombow Mono Eraser, but I didn't need to know that at the start, and I only know that now because I got started in the first place. So step two is start. Step three, listen. Clearly, I had no idea what I was doing. Looking at my first drawing, it was terrible. The important thing is that I knew I didn't know anything about drawing. One of the best quotes from the Greek philosopher Socrates is, the only thing I know is that I know nothing. So I made sure I remembered that. I was ready to listen to someone who did know how to draw. This is one of the biggest obstacles stopping people from learning quickly. They don't actually listen. They do things in the way they think is best, even if they don't have any skill in that area. If you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting what you've always got. The quality of the information you learn from is extremely important. So I looked for videos on YouTube of people who could draw how I wanted to draw, who could prove they knew what they were talking about. So step three, is listen. Step 4. Speed up the videos. This step may seem a bit odd, but it's extremely useful and will make the biggest difference to your learning time. I don't know many people who use it, but they definitely should. You need to increase the playback speed of the videos you're watching to learn things. There's a settings cog in the bottom right of YouTube videos, and you can go up to 2 times speed, but something better than that is a free Google Chrome add-on that I use called Video Speed Controller. This allows you to quickly change the speed of a video, and you can change the speed to much more than two times. It depends on the video and how slowly the person talks, but usually I listen to videos around 2.5 of the normal speed. This helps so much when watching unedited videos of people talking, because they say a lot of pointless things. You might be thinking this makes you miss a lot of information from the video, but that doesn't happen. Almost everything I've learned for this channel has been in at least two times speed, and it is the reason for me being able to understand so many different concepts and has allowed me to listen to so many audiobooks in the past year. Don't worry about focusing on hearing every single word of the video, because when was the last time you remembered every single word from a video? Never. You need to listen out for the most important information. If you were driving a car at 30 miles an hour, or 200 miles an hour, which one do you think you would concentrate on more? The 200 mile an hour, of course. You are never going to remember 100% of the information from a video. Watching in normal speed, let's say you retain 60% of the information. When you listen in double speed, that drops to maybe 50%, but you can listen to twice as many videos. Also, because you take less time to watch the video, you can watch it a second time anyway. When you do this, it also makes learning much more interesting, because the speed means that the topic is constantly changing. I can't watch videos in normal speed anymore, because it's too slow and it feels like a huge waste of time. Remember, time is our most valuable commodity, 
so don't waste it. I love Project Life Mastery and I've learned a lot about self-improvement from his videos, but he talks quite slowly, so I listen to his videos in sometimes 3.2 times normal speed. This means that a 30 minute video can be watched in less than 10 minutes. Give it a try and remember what Socrates said. The only thing I know is that I know nothing. So you won't know how well this works until you try. You can start off slowly and increase the speed, which is what I did. To begin with, 1.25 speed seems fast, but it's only because you're not used to hearing anything like that. So step four, speed up the videos. Step five, fail and learn over and over. Thomas Watson, former CEO of IBM said, if you want to increase your success rate, double your failure rate. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. The only way you learn is by failing. One of my favorite quotes ever is mistakes are the portals of discovery. So give things a go and get lots of failures out of your system. See failures as figuring out how not to do it. Make sure that you learn from each mistake and try and improve with each attempt. This is exactly how Ed Sheeran learned how to write songs. Here's a clip of how he describes improving at songwriting. Um, you view it as a dirty tap. When you switch a dirty tap on, it's going to flow shit water out for a substantial amount of time and then clean water is going to start flowing and now and then you'll get a bit of shit but as long as it gets out of you it's fine <laughs> so with songs you're going to write shit songs at the beginning you are my songs were terrible my raps were terrible like i've listened to it the other day it's awful but i got it out of me and the more and more you write the more and more you experience and then you start flowing clean water and songs start getting better and better and better and when you just you're on a good streak you're writing good songs now and then you're going to write a shit song and that song is out of you and you can move on ed has proven this works Listen to what his old songs sounded like when the dirty water was still coming out. This is my thing. When, when people go, when people go, oh, oh you're, so, you, you're so talented, you were born with natural talent. I'm like, mm, no. Okay. <laughs> you, have to, you have to really learn and really practice. This is me playing guitar and singing. I'm going to put it into my mic like this. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Compare that to his songs now, and obviously there's a huge difference. So step five, fail and learn over and over. Step six, break down the task. I wanted to be able to draw faces, so instead of trying to draw a whole face, I learned how to draw each feature individually. I watched a playlist, in about 2.5 times speed, about how to draw noses, eyes, mouths and ears, and you can see the improvements. Practicing each feature separately stopped me from being overwhelmed. Whatever you want to learn, focus on improving just one part at a time. If you still feel overwhelmed, make sure to focus on one day or even one hour of practice at a time. Take the learning piece by piece. So step six, break down the task. Step seven, do deliberate practice and don't waste time. Most people think practice makes perfect. Actually, perfect practice makes perfect. When most people practice, they keep doing things they already know how to do. This is understandable because it's enjoyable, but it gets you nowhere. You need to only practice things you cannot do. I practice ears more because I found those particularly difficult. Practicing what you already know how to do is a huge waste of time and the reason it takes people so long to learn things. To learn quickly, only focus on improving your weak areas. This is called deliberate practice. The reason it's so tempting to practice what we can already do is because that way we won't fail. But like I said in step five, you need to fail to learn. Deliberate practice can be much more tiring, so it's tempting to switch back to doing what you already know. But instead, just take a break and continue deliberate practice after. Never waste time practicing what you already know. The other biggest reason people take so long to learn is because they spend too much time doing other things instead of just getting on with practice. Mike Boyd is an awesome YouTuber who learns to do loads of different things and documents the exact amount of time in hours that it takes him to do it. He learned to ride a unicycle in just 2 hours and 38 minutes. He made a video called Why Learning is Quicker Than You Think, and it emphasises the point that I'm trying to make. Here's him talking about it. Learning is actually pretty fast. It's all the other crap that takes up the time. So it seems if you really want to learn something quick, what's more important than how you practice, or where you practice, or your equipment, is reducing the time surrounding your actual practice time. So cut out all the tasks that surround your practice, and get on with it. If you cut out these two huge time wasters, you'll learn so much faster. So step seven, do deliberate practice and don't waste time. Step eight, celebrate and enjoy the journey. This is really simple. Celebrate the successes when they happen. If you don't, what is the point in any of it? 
Enjoy the process of learning. Remember that happiness is the goal of all other goals. So have fun with whatever you're trying to achieve. This will help to motivate you to learn other things in the future.